Hi guys, and welcome back to Petrolhead Podcasts. Today you join me next to my partner's car, a 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E California Route 1 all-wheel drive. Given the recent renewed interest people have had in compact EV SUVs due to attractive financing and lease options, I thought it would be good to provide an overview of why we bought this Mackie and the positive and negative aspects of our ownership experience so far having covered around 5,000 miles in the Mackie. Firstly, an overview of why we bought this. My partner wanted a stylish compact SUV with some form of electrification to replace her 2016 Ford Escape that did not achieve very good fuel economy and was beginning to look and feel very dated. Most of the hybrid and plug-in hybrid compact SUVs are very dull to both look at and drive, such as the new Ford Escape, the Hyundai Tucson, the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CR-V, so we did not seriously consider them. Therefore, we focused on Ford EVs and narrowed our search to four vehicles that we think are the best overall choices in the segment, namely the Tesla Model Y, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. Regular viewers of the channel will recall that I did a comparison video on these four EVs about half a year ago. What I did not tell you at the time was that the video was based off of our own search process after sitting in and test driving all four cars to get a sense of the pros and cons of all of them. You might be wondering, since the Ioniq 5 won that comparison, why did we buy the Mustang Mach-E, a car that finished second in the comparison? This is because of three main reasons. Firstly, while I still believe as an overall package, the Ioniq 5 is the best because it has the most high quality driving experience and the best interior materials. My partner thinks the Ioniq 5 styling is a little unconventional and weird from certain angles, which I agree, and she much prefers the Ford's styling. Secondly, we both think the Ioniq 5's central screen with its large white bezels feels a lot more dated than the mach screen. Thirdly, the Ioniq 5 all-wheel drive has an EPA estimated range of only 260 miles versus the mach that has 312 miles. Given my partner frequently drives relatively long distances, the extra range in the Ford made it a more attractive option for us. So given these three considerations, we decided to buy the Ford over the Hyundai. Looking at positives of the ownership experience, and the first is the mach styling. The mach has a very well-resolved look, especially in this vapor blue metallic color with its fast back-like profile, the slim headlights, the smooth surfacing on the side profile, and the attractive tail lights inspired by the regular gas-powered Mustang. The mach is quite a looker. Many of our friends are not familiar with what this car is, but have commented very positively on the styling of the vehicle upon first seeing it, and it certainly feels a lot more unique than, say, a Tesla Model Y. The second positive of the ownership experience has been the performance and handling of the mach -E. Ford has tried to inject a fun-to-drive character into the mach -E, and it certainly works. The dual-motor all-wheel drive California Route 1 with the extended range battery has an impressive 346 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque and accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds. More than just the on-paper figures, in the real world, the instant torque and response of electric motors means the mach -E always feels really powerful for a small SUV and is never short of overtaking power. The handling of the mach -E is also surprisingly good. The car gives you confidence to take on-ramps and off-ramps at very high speeds and feels really planted and agile with very minimal body lean. I would say the car actually has better handling than the 2021 BMW X3 that I previously owned with noticeably less body lean, which was very surprising to me given BMW is known for making good handling vehicles and also given the mach -E California Route 1 has eco tires that are not the best for grip. The third positive of the ownership experience are the technology features of the mach -E. The car has a very large central infotainment screen and an impressive suite of features such as games including Sudoku and a lane change game, as well as inbuilt YouTube. At first I thought these are very gimmicky features, but they are surprisingly useful for burning time when you are, for example, waiting for the car to charge or waiting to pick up someone from the airport. Additionally, Ford's Blue Cruise semi-autonomous driving features has proven to be mostly well executed with abilities to follow lanes, brake the car to a standstill, as well as execute automatic lane changes. There are situations such as when a lane suddenly diverges into an exit where the car can get lost and try to follow the exit instead of continuing on the normal highway path. But overall, this has been a welcome and useful feature. Moving on to the negatives of the mach -E's ownership experience and the biggest negative is the range and charging situation. Despite a claimed range of 312 miles, in the real world, we have hardly ever seen the total range to be above 300 miles. Most of the time, a full charge gets around 280 miles in warm weather conditions and 230 or so in colder conditions. Additionally, since Ford recommends not to charge the car to full capacity to preserve the battery, realistically, like most EV owners, you will be using the 10 to 80% range of the car, which equates to around 160 to 200 miles, which is really not a lot and means we have to charge the car two or three times a week. The range estimate in the gauge cluster is also very problematic and fluctuates a lot, making it a very imprecise estimator of real-world range. 
Additionally, the charging situation is terrible to say the least. We don't have a home charging solution and have to rely on the public chargers in our parking garage, office and other public places. And these have a number of issues. Firstly, the vast majority of them are level 2 chargers and not level 3 DC fast chargers, so have a maximum charging rate of only 6 kilowatts at each station. Sometimes when there is another car sharing the same station with you, the charging speed drops to 3 kilowatts. As a result, given the Mark E has a 91 kilowatt hour battery, it can take up to 15 hours to add 50% of charge to the car. Level 3 DC fast chargers are rare, and we have often found them to be taken up by other cars. The car would benefit massively if it supported Tesla's supercharger network natively. While Ford has pledged to give all Mackie owners a Tesla NACS charging adapter to allow the Mackie to use Tesla's superchargers, these are on back order, and even now, six months after we bought the car, we have still not received our adapter. The second negative is the ride quality. The trade-off to the good handling of the Mackie is a very firm ride. Over speed humps and potholes, the car feels very firmly sprung, especially for rear seat passengers. On smooth highway roads, the ride is fine, but on bad roads, it feels uncomfortable. And it is in this regard that competitors such as the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 have the biggest advantage over the Mackie. The third negative is related to general ergonomics. The 360 degree cameras in the Mackie have pretty low resolution and makes the car harder to park. There is also no automated parking feature available. The vertically oriented screen is mounted at a 90 degree angle, which makes it hard to see the controls on the bottom half of the screen, especially while driving. It doesn't help that the main reversing camera feed is shown on the bottom part of the screen. If you want to choose the California Route 1, the highest range variant of the Mackie, you cannot get a power lift gate even as an optional extra, which is just bizarre. There is no cover over the panoramic roof either, which is not ideal. The door bins are not large enough even for regular size bottles, which is frustrating. The rear seats have narrow seat bases and do not have enough under thigh support, which in combination with the firm ride makes the rear occupant experience a lackluster one. Overall, the Mackie has definitely been a nice vehicle to own. We have appreciated the great styling, technology and the fun to drive character of the car. The charging issues and ride quality, however, are rather major negatives, and it is in this respect that we think Ford should focus their updates to the car in future. What do you guys think of the Ford Mustang Mackie? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to be the first to see more amazing content like this in the future. Cheers!